you never know what someone's background is or it doesn't even really matter. All you can do is improve yourself uh, every single day and focus on what you're doing as a company individual, whatever the case is. So that kind of ties into the last part of the show, which we're calling a hole in one. It's your best advice for someone to apply to their life or business or both. I know you have a lot of uh, potential advice, so feel free to to give a few hole in ones uh, that they can apply today tomorrow, this week, something in the short term, uh, some sort of actionable insight that you think can improve uh, a listener or viewer's life? Uh, I, I think there's a couple things. Um, I think the first one is, you know, you have to take the first step. And the first step is always the hardest step. But you have to stop talking about it. And you have to, as the Nike slogan goes, just do it. And you know, when you go into it, make sure that you're committed to do it. And if you find that you love it or you enjoy it, you know, if you want to become great at it, you have to become obsessed about it. You truly have to become obsessed if you want to become great. You know, it, I think my actions speak for itself. You know, it showed that I was obsessed about becoming great at real estate by going down after working all day as a lawyer and then working on these properties at nighttime and on the weekends. That's crazy. Why would anybody do that? But I had that obsession. I wanted to become really good at this business. You know, early in my career, and even still to this day, I meet with my peers. I meet with people that have, you know, are some of the best developers in St. Louis. Um, And I still meet with them. I met with them very early in my career. so I could see that vision. I could see what it took to get to that level. And that takes your obsession to a whole nother level in terms of how you have to refine yourself and become better. And you know, the way that I look at um, refinement is very similar to, there's this famous sculptor from France named August Rodin. And his most famous sculpture is the thinker. You know, it's the guy sitting on a rack like this. And when you go and see one of his sculptures, Sculptures, you know, typically has uh, they're a the couple different mediums. You know, they're marble, and you know, they get cast in bronze and stuff like that. And so, but the the marble ones are really neat to see because you're chipping away at a rock. And and some of these sculptures of Rodin's, you can see where he's literally starting off with this really rough stone, and then you can see where he's finished another part of it, and it's like a perfect hand. And that's refinement in a nutshell. Is that you have to start, don't be afraid that you're a rough rock. Everybody starts off being horrible at what they're about to get into. You know, it's like riding a bike. Nobody in the history of riding a bike has ever successfully ridden a bike the first time. But you see enough people riding bikes around that you got to go in your head. Well, enough people around me are riding bikes. I should be able to do this. You know, and you get on the bike and you fall and it really hurts. And you, you keep falling. It really hurts. But you're like, hmm. I know this bike works. I know this this invention works. And you keep doing it. And eventually you get to a point where it's second nature. That's why they say, like riding a bike. And that's the point that you have to get to with whatever businesses you want to get into. Is that you have to get to a point where you've had the scrapes, you've had the scars, but it then becomes second nature for you. And then you then take it to a whole nother level of how can I push myself to become faster? How can I push myself to have more stamina? You know, what heights do I really want to take this to, you know, in riding this bike, you know, and that's what young people have to seek, you know, and they cannot look in five-year, 10-year increments. You have to look much, much farther than that. I mean, wealth is built over decades and decades and decades. And if you just approach it with that mindset of moving that ball down the field every single day. You're eventually going to look back. And how I look back isn't actually like me looking up my portfolio and going, oh, wow, look at that. It's really funny. How I look back and know that I'm getting somewhere where I want to go is I'll run into people that I haven't seen in a couple of years. And they're like, oh, Jared, you know, you're still doing the apartment thing. And man, how many units are you up to? You know, I'll tell them and they'll be like, oh, I remember when you had like 20 units. Or I remember when you had like 50 units. Or I remember when you just first started off. And you hear that and you go, oh, wow. You know, and there, I forgot the gentleman that said this, but he said, successful people are too busy to notice their success. And that's how it should be. 
the people that notice their success are the people that are on social media flashing it to you. And that's wrong. You should be focused on your trade. You should be focused on being great, you know, and all the great ones. Then once they retire or when somebody asks them a question about, hey, Jordan, what about your six championships? Then you can look back and you can say, wow, you know, I was able to do all that. But in the moment, you can't do that, you know, and Kobe Bryant's got a great line about this. He was in the playoffs and I tell people about this all the time, you know, in an interview and he was up to nothing. And this reporter asked him, you know, why aren't you smiling? You're up to nothing in the playoffs. And he goes, job's not finished. He goes, we won the championship yet? No, job's not finished. You know, and I love that. This is one of the greatest players in the world. And he's still not satisfied being up to nothing against somebody in the playoffs because he knows the job's not done. He knows that it's not time yet to look back on the season, you know, with happiness. He's still focused on the end goal, which is winning a championship. And that's how we focus on every one of our projects is I have blinders on. I don't care about my competitors. I don't care about my naysayers. All I am focused on is completing that project and having a successful outcome for our investors and bankers. That's it. That's my singular focus. You know, Maybe ADHD gives me that advantage, but that's all I focus on. And then when it's finally done and I send that email out, letting people know what their returns are going to be, then that's my look back. That's when I get a chance to go, okay, now we got it. Let's go on to the next one now. I love it. 